Hey students, I hope all is well. This is the first video of my tutorial requests. I want to be answering questions based on this form. I'm going to start from top to bottom. And when I finish, I'm going to add a link to the video. I'm going to be posting these videos on YouTube so I can add links to additional resources in the description and also answer any questions in the comment section. So for this video, I'm going to talk about service workers for the front end nano degree project five. All right. Now, let me start off by explaining what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. First, I'm going to be using this node package. It's called HTTP server, and it's just a simple command line server, similar to Python simple server or VS code has their own development server. Either of them is fine, but this is what I'm going to be using. And here on my desktop, I have a folder that has all of the um, files that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. All right. Now, inside of this um, folder, which I call test-fw, I have a basic HTML page. I have this data.json file at the root. It just has a simple message property that says admit one. I have a simple style sheet. It's empty, nothing in it. Inside my image folder, I have a simple Udacity logo. Inside my script folder, I have a simple script. It's a function I'm assigning to a variable, and all it's going to do is fetch that JSON file and append that message property to the ID demo, right? Now I also have another script called service worker dash control. And all this is going to do is set up a service worker, which I have at the root of this test folder right here. All right. Now, what is a service worker? So basically, it's a proxy or acts like a proxy server that sits between your web application, your browser, and the network. And what it does is intercept your network requests and determine if it needs to go like to that actual resource location or give back something else, right? Now, a service worker has a different context. So for example, it doesn't have access to the document object or the global scope. It exists in its own type of realm and it doesn't refresh or update on page refresh. Rather, it updates on update events or there's a new service worker that is being installed, right? Now, how do you set up a service worker? There are three main events that this page will cover. This is from developer.mozilla.org. And this entire page goes over a service worker extensively. And it'll show you all three events, how it works, and how you can set it up. And it also has examples on it. So the first event is the install event, right? Inside the install event, you're going to pretty much set up a cache and just store critical resources to your page like the index the style sheet any javascript files the other event is called activate now inside this event basically this is where you do some cleanup work such as clearing old caches right and the way that's done is you usually have a list of all the cache names and you compare that to the caches that's in the browser and anything that's not inside the list you will just delete and the last event is the fetch event right now inside the fetch event this is where your service worker intercepts requests and determines what to do with it right now each event will take in a event object right and you just respond with whatever logic you want 
So for example, if let's say we get a fetch request, it's going to match that request in the cache and see if we have a match. And if we do, we just simply return it. If not, then we're going to fetch that request. We're going to create a clone of the response. And we're going to store a copy of that in our cache. Right? So those are the three main events. Now let's show you how you actually set it up. In order to set up a service worker, you would simply simply add an if statement. Let me find that portion right here. All right, so everything's on this page. This push right here will show you how to actually register it. We just add this little block right here. If service worker in Navigator, then you will just register it. You will specify the path to that service worker and the scope that you want it to control. And it will explain all of that in this little portion right here. Right now, to show you my example. In my service worker dash control uh, script file, I just changed it a little bit to point to my service worker and the scope I want to control. And once it finishes, I'm just going to call init page, right? So here at the root service worker, which is right here, here's how I set up my service worker. So at the very top, I just have a simple log statement. I have a cache version number which I can use to change the cache names. That way I can clear out old ones in my activate event. I have a few functions here to help me determine if a resource is an image, what um, cache to put it in, and if it's an internal or external resource. So same thing as the example in my install event, I'm just Picking my static cache and just caching some critical resources in my activate event, pretty much doing the same thing. I'm just clearing out old cache names by comparing all the cache names to my list here. And also, by the way, the reason why I'm not adding a version number to the image cache is because images don't often change as much as other static resources like style sheet you may update the look of the website but some of the images might be the same so you don't want to clear out the cache you have to recache them now here in the fetch event what i'm doing here is setting up an if statement if it's a get then i'm gonna go through all this logic if not then i'm just gonna respond with the normal activity which is fetching that request because I don't want to tamper with post request or put requests which could be like adding or uploading an image to a website. I'm only going to intercept get request and determine if I have that. So inside this um, block what I'm going to do is same thing as the tutorial. I'm going to check if that request is inside the cache. If we do have that result, I'm just going to return it. If not, then I'm going to fetch it, determine what cache I want to put it in. Once I store it inside that cache, I'm just going to return that response. Now note how I'm calling dot clone on the request and the response. Inside a service worker or inside JavaScript in general, to have a better performance, you can only use the information out of your request or response once. After that, it becomes empty. So if you want to create a copy of it, you would have to use its clone method to create a copy of that. So once I store everything inside the cache, you just return the response, right? And that's about it. It's literally less than 100 lines. That's not much to it. You can get really intricate as how you want to answer set a never request if you don't return a certain resource or whatever that you want 
you can add that logic here inside your fetch request. But on a basic level, this is usually all you would need to set up your service worker. Now to show you how it works in action, I'm going to run a test um, or development server inside the root folder here and load it inside the browser. Right. Also, um, to actually set it up, once you have your service work service worker logic um, coded, all you have to do is just add this um, if statement. If service worker is a navigator, you just register it and then do whatever you want after it registers. So I'm going to go ahead and open a command window here. I'm going to do HTTP dash server. I'm going to do the same folder dash P 8000. Right, so now I'm running a dev server at port 8000 inside this folder. I'm going to go ahead and load that up. Localhost 8000. And we can see inside our tab, we have our service worker. Let me just start over just so you can see all the log statements. Clear all the site data. Right? I'm going to hold down shift and click the refresh button. And we can see service worker online, registration succeeded, current cache, which is this right here. This is our JSON that we fetched and clear no caches. So basically, all those um, setup steps were taken. If we come to the dev tools and application section and you click on service worker, we can see that it's activated and up and running. And if we come to our cache storage, we can see it starts off with just this one cache, which was all the resources that we specified in our install event. Now, if we were to refresh the page, we can see we have these new caches here, the image cache, right? See the preview, we see the headers of the request that was made for it. And we have the others cache, which was any resources not on our domain. So we have these three caches here, our service worker, activated and running. And um, you may get this error, but I say don't worry about it. Everything's still up and running right now to have that offline experience let's try to disconnect from the network you can see it's off if you try to refresh it we should see all of our resources still here we should still get that image we should still get um, this image since this is not local this is from another domain and we should still get um, that JSON data, right? Because we cached it. So if you refresh it, it still works. We still get our images. We still get that JSON data. And that's because we have a copy of that in our cache. So even though we're offline, we can still use our app to some degree. And that's what the service worker is for. Not leaving your application completely um, dysfunctional when you lose network activity. You can still use it to some extent, right? Now with that, I'm going to end this tutorial. If you have any questions, just add it in the comment section below. I'm going to add links to this um, dev server, which is a command line server, and add a link to this page, as well as this page here. And with that, I will end this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day.